So the purpose of this video is to bring attention to our data center migration project plan, which you can download and use for free on our website. But we thought we'd use this opportunity to explain why folks migrate out of data centers to begin with. By knowing why people leave data centers, you can avoid some of the issues we've seen out there. And you'll know what to look for. Reason number one, folks move out of their server rooms so they can leverage an economy of scale built by others, which should offer better reliability. But power, network, and HVAC outages will cause IT managers to think about alternatives. I'd also like to mention that while these systems are inherently redundant in most data centers, a lot of times it's the auto switching mechanisms that will fail, negating all the redundancies put in place by the facility. Reason number two, another reason why folks leave data centers is due to what I call power density mismatch. Here's an example. Someone moves into a data center with a traditional server hardware setup. We're talking about traditional one to four U servers that may only need four kilowatts of cooling. All that hardware, as it gets near the end of its life, a decision is made to increase the computing density by the way of blade servers. So here's the problem. While their cabinets are able to cool four to eight kilowatts just fine, the blade servers, if you stack them, can go way higher than that. Maybe 12 to 20 kilowatts is not unusual these days. And so here's what's happening. You end up buying more cabinets and leaving some of the spaces half filled so that the facility can keep up with the cooling requirements. Slightly off comment here, but you can also get the opposite issue. Let's say you purchase space in a data center that has very high density out of the gate, like 20 kilowatts, and your equipment isn't anywhere near that, you'll probably end up paying a premium per cabinet and not getting your money's worth, since that build out of that data center was more costly to provide the higher density and cooling. And like all businesses, those costs have to be passed along to the consumer. Reason number three, logistics, don't get me wrong, security is important, but chronic issues getting in and out of a data center, especially after hours, will cause clients to leave. A data center that offers 24-hour access, but a telephone call or a ticket needs to be opened is not very fun when you're waiting outside the data center at 3 a.m. Reason number four, mergers and acquisitions and going out of business. So that's the fourth reason we see is that business models change and you also have corporate mergers and acquisitions that can cause consolidations. And unfortunately, sometimes businesses go under, meaning that they don't need their co-location anymore. Reason number five and our final reason today is data center consolidations. What happens with some data centers is they can have two data centers that aren't profitable. Let's say each data center has 30% occupancy. To get profitability out of one of the data centers, sometimes they'll take 30% capacity, combine it with another facility with 30% capacity, bringing it up to 60%, which makes them profitable, but upsets their clients, even if the move cost is fully borne by the data center themselves. So the point of this video is to offer you a free downloadable tool that helps you plan your data center migration. It's a full data center migration project plan in Excel. It's really good, and you can download it using the links on this page. So if you're planning to make a move anytime soon, please refer to this video for key questions to ask before signing a contract and all the steps in the move. Until next time, thank you so much for watching this.